In this video, I'll demonstrate the basic methods of setting defaults and annotating bearings, distances, and curve information on CAD entities. Let's begin by looking at the settings and set up some defaults. What we have in this drawing is a perimeter, the green polyline representing the boundary of the project, two lot lines, two easement lines, right-of-way lines extending away from the property lines, and an existing center line, all of which I would like to annotate with bearings, distances, and arc information, but on separate layers with different text sizes and be able to control certain aspects of their appearance. So we begin by looking under the annotation pull-down menu and looking for the annotate defaults. Again, if you're using ribbons, it's under the survey ribbon, the annotation panel, annotation defaults. This brings up the annotate defaults dialog box where you have several tabs going across the top. The first one is the general tab. Here you set text size and a couple other cosmetic options. The text size is set by using a text size scaler. In this case, it's 0 0.10, which means that will be multiplied times whatever the drawing setup is. So a 40 scale drawing would end up with four foot high text. The offset scaler offsets the piece of text from the line or curve. There's an option to use mtex, which I have enabled. Previous labels is set to erase. So if I relabel an entity, it will erase the old label and replace it. Drawing leaders to endpoints on lines and arcs are what I refer to as crow's feet. There are options to control the appearance of the crow's feet. The leader size scaler sets the size while the height scaler controls the arc of the crow's foot. The offset scaler sets the distance away from the endpoint of the line or arc for the placement of the crow's foot. In this example, I have it set to zero, which means it will connect directly to the endpoints. There are several options of the type of crow's foot to draw. I have mine set on a dash dot line and of course the layer on which to draw the crow's feet. Same options apply to arcs as they do for lines. In the angle tab, we can essentially control the layer that the angle or bearing will be drawn on. I have it set to boundary dash text, the text style, which is a style I set using the style manager, the manner in which the bearings will be displayed and the precision, the angle separator, when you pick a line, the bearing direction method controls which direction that will be labeled. I have mine set away from picked end, so if I pick towards the beginning of a line, it will label it the direction extending away from where I picked. And then of course, north, south, east, and west control, I have mine set to and just the initial N, S, E, or W. The bearing leaders, is an arrow that can be placed above the bearing that indicates the direction it's going, which assists in reading a plat. That leader can also be controlled with the leader scaler and arrow size. The offset scaler is the distance off of the bearing. The distance tab is very similar where you control the layer and the text style, the suffix, which I have the foot symbol, and the precision, which is set you have an option to label distances with an alternate or second unit. The settings for those units are made in the drawing setup dialog box, which includes not just US feet, international feet and meters, but also grid to ground scale factors. Once those settings have been made, you can utilize the option of labeling first and second distances. The arcs, again, layer and font, so as you can see, angle, distance, and arcs can all be separated on different layers. Series lines has to do with having multiple distances along the same line with an option to place only one bearing for all the distances. Likewise, parallel lines would be two lines across from each other, such as a right-of-way, and you would prefer to only have one bearing and then the distance labeled 
separately on each side of the right of way. Once you are satisfied with your settings, I'm going to save these settings and I'm going to create a file called General Annotations and it adds an extension ADF, which stands for Annotation Default Settings. And I save that. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And these are now my current defaults when I label bearings and distances. I then can go back under the annotate pulldown, under angle and distance, and look at my options for labeling bearings and distances. So on my perimeter, I would like a bearing and distance over the line. So I execute that, and I have a bearing and distance on top of the line. And I pick towards the beginning of the line, and you can see by the arrow that the bearing is headed in that direction. Now, as I just labeled this, I would prefer actually to have this bearing on the opposite side of the line as well as this one. So when I pick the option above or below, is based upon the rotation of the line as it has to do with the drawing orientation the X and Y. So I'm going to re-annotate these two lines with another option, angle and distance, bearing and distance under the line. When I select this line, it erases the old annotation and replaces it on the other side of the line along with the crow's feet. I will select that line as well, the street line out front, and now for the curve. Back under annotate, annotate arc, label arc. I select the arc and a dialog box appears with the options. I would like to label with the arc and the prefix A equals, radius, R equals, and I'm going to add the delta angle on here as well. In the third position, you can also control the side of the arc that is labeled on. In the case of the arc that I'm labeling, I would like it on the inside of that arc, and I want all three stacked. And you can see the diagram below showing how that will be labeled. I hit OK. It labels my arc information. I'm now going to label my lot lines. In this case, I would like to have these labeled bearing over distance. I pick the lot line, and it labels it with the bearing on top of the line and the distance underneath. And now I like to label the easement lines. Before doing that, I'm going to create a new set of defaults for those easement lines. So I go back under Annotate Defaults, and I'm going to change the text size scaler a little bit smaller, 0 0.08, and I'm going to turn off the leaders for both the endpoints on lines and arcs. Change the easement text layer for the angles to boundary easement text. These layers are coming from my default template. Distance, same thing. And arcs. So essentially all I've done change the text size, turn off the leaders, and change the layers. I'm now going to save that as a new default called easements. So I've done that, I hit OK. I'm going to go back under annotate, angle and distance. I'm going to annotate bearing over distance. realizing, having labeled this in this manner, that I have a bearing here that is the same as bearing here. So if that's unnecessary for you, I can just relabel that distance only. This would be labeled distance on top of the line, making for a cleaner drawing. Beyond the distance along the easement line itself, I would like the distance from this corner of the property to the beginning point of the easement. To do so, I'm going to first select distance underneath the line, 
And you can see that the command is defaulting to selecting line work. However, if you look at the command line, I have an option to select points. If I do that, I hit P for points, and then using my entity snaps, I can snap to the end point of the lot line to the end point of the easement line. I can do the same thing here and here and there, placing a distance from this corner to the easement line. I just change this now to distance above and snap to the two points. As I look at this, I realize I need to repeat that same procedure for the lot dimensions. I'm missing a lot dimension here and here. This is the value of saving your defaults. So if I go into my defaults now, I can load my general settings and then go ahead and annotate. Distance below, point to point, distance above, I need an arc length from here along the lot and for the rest of this lot. In this same ribbon panel, I have label arc and a similar option to select points. My beginning point then, the end point, pick radius point, I will snap to the center and pick another end point. I am then prompted to make the decision of whether the curve is to the left or the right. It is to the left. And the dialog box for the curve options appear again. In this case, I'm going to turn off the delta and radius. And the arc, I'm going to move to the outside. Like, OK. Again, P for points, end point, radius point, center, end point. Again, to the left, my options are the same. I hit OK. I would also like labels on the right-of-way extensions from either side of the property lines. I use the same custom labels. There you go for distance. It's set to points. I hit L to go back to line work and select the line work. Label arc. And there's my arc length. I would now like to label the center line in a similar manner. But again, I would like that on a different layer and a different text size. So I go back to my defaults and I change my text size scaler again to 08. Turn off my endpoints and leaders. And I'm going to select a layer for the center lines for the text to be drawn on. Existing center line text. Same with the distance and the arcs. Again, save these settings. I'll call these existing center lines. I can now label my center line on a separate layer. So that is the simple, what I call a manual method of labeling bearings and distances around a plat. Very easy to follow, very easy to set up, and very quick to implement. But in a separate video, I will be showing you how to automate this process using a program called Auto Annotate. Please take a moment and watch that video as well, as you may find it very beneficial.